You're just in time to catch a brand new episode of the Cox Short Film Showcase. You know that awesome show where they spotlight Virginia filmmakers? If you're a loyal viewer, we're glad to have you back. If you've never heard of us, stick around. There'll be explosions and stuff. As a matter of fact, let's get right to those explosions right now. Without further ado, we'll kick this off with another Chandler Perry offering, Enjoy Foiled. <laughs> Here you go. What is this? Coffee. I told you specifically to get Frappuccinos. Oh, come on, you fairy. Coffee's coffee. What's the difference? The difference? Frappuccinos are cold. Coffee is hot. If we get in a tight spot and need to make a quick getaway, which would you rather have in your lap? Frappuccino. Frappuccino! All right. There she is. Let's do this. No, you're not in charge. You do it. Look, I'm not asking you to build a time machine and kill Thomas Edison. Just flip the switch. 100 grand. 100? Who is she? Hannah Indiana? It's Hannah Montana. Whatever. This box smells like onions. I don't think so. It's just the room. No, it's the bag. It's not the bag. Ugh, I think it is the bag. Great, now she's seen our faces. So what? There are a million guys that match her description. Skinny white person. That could be my grandmother. Yes, but your grandmother doesn't have a record. Obviously, you haven't met grandma. Look, the point is, you've got to think things through. Why would I need to? Clearly, you have enough brains for the two of us. You're an idiot. What, did you tie her up using... Silly string? I just did a slipknot. You should have used two half hitches. Don't worry, I got it. Double check that. Don't get any more funny ideas, Missy. The more you cooperate, the sooner we get our money and you can go home. Yeah, about that, a hundred grand sounds like a little much. I'd go with 75, actually. No need to be greedy. We're criminals, therefore we're greedy. No, you're criminals, therefore you commit crimes. She's got a point. It's better to go with the sure thing. We only need 25 grand to get through the end of the year anyway. Shut up, Richard! What'd you say that for? Now she knows my name! Oh, don't worry. I'm not good with names, Shelly. It's Tom, actually. Hey! Actually, I don't think you'd even get that much for me. What are you talking about? Your dad's the mayor. He's loaded. What? My dad's a chemistry teacher. Nice try, Katie. We know who you are. Katie Reed. Blonde hair, green eyes, four foot four, goes to Greendale Elementary. Favorite ice cream? Cookie dough. Um, my name's Elena, I have blue eyes, I'm four seven, and you don't rock cookie dough is unhealthy. You don't like cookie dough? You're the only girl who matched that description at the playground. Your name is Katie Reed, your father is the mayor. Her eyes are kind of blue. I may have gotten confused when they got on the merry-go-round. My dad is a chemistry teacher. Prove it. Um, okay, do you have some tin foil? Yeah. An empty bottle? Sure. And some toilet bowl cleaner? Um, maybe. I can show you a cool trick that my dad taught me. I'll be right back. You're kind of fat. Oh, hey, I'm big boned. Runs in the family. I don't think anyone runs in your family. I've got it. 
Okay, so just fix the tin foil and the cleaner in the bottle. I don't think I should do that. I'm not very coordinated. Your coordinates are fine. Just do it. Yeah, like that. Now put the cap on and shake it up. Okay. What is it? A works bomb. A what? Wait, a bomb? How do you set it off? Oh, the chemical reaction has already started. Ah! Who are you? Elena! My dad is a teacher at Westmore Middle, my eyes are blue, and I don't like cookie dough ice cream. I think my ears are bleeding! I can't hear anything! Tom? Yeah? Shut up! Excuse us, won't you? I don't think this is the girl. I think we should just drop her back off and cut our losses. We could still get something for her. Jump change, perhaps. If we're gonna do this, we need to do it big. Seems like such a waste. It's only been half an hour. And we've learned how to make improvised explosives. So there is a silver lining to this mess. All right. A mess you're cleaning up. What? Put the hood back on that little terrorist. You didn't see this face. You didn't see this face. I think you should listen. I'm the mayor's daughter. Perry is young, but fast becoming a master of well-paced, funny dialogue. Although I did worry a bit that our heroine was in danger again there at the end. What did you think? Did you like Foiled? Want to see more Chandler Perry? Send us an email. Let us know what you're enjoying about the show or what you'd like us to change. Don't, run, don't roam too far from your viewing device. We've got more Showcase coming up after the break. Sometimes you're having one of those days. And all you want to do is put on your clown makeup and have a good cry. The only problem is your clown makeup keeps getting washed down your face by your salty, overwrought tears. But not anymore. Introducing O'Halloran's Tear Proof Clown Makeup. O'Halloran's knows that when your clown makeup is streaming down your face due to the copious tears you're shedding, well, you're just not the freshest clown you could be. Whether it's movie night, or game night, Or murder night. You need to be able to wear clown makeup and sob like a baby without worrying about runny grease paint or sodden eyeliner. Thank you, you miserable tear soaked clown. Thank you. O'Halloran's Tear Proof Clown Makeup is available at an O'Halloran's makeup store near you. And just in time for the holidays, O'Halloran's Bath Waterproof Clown Makeup. Coming soon. Here on the showcase, we aren't just about laughs or thrills. Every now and then, we like to class the place up a little. You know, bring in some art to enjoy with our cheese fries, you know. To that end, we bring you Matt Birchfield's offering, The Abyss.
was that, is that a, I thought that, uh, okay, I, I think I'm officially at a loss for words. Hey, if uh, you're a local filmmaker and like to be screened here on the show, well, please shoot us an email with a link to your film, and you may just see your work right here on the Cox Short Film Showcase. Or maybe you're just here for the great local films. In that case, we'll be back with this week's installment of Seven City Legacy featuring General Norman Johnson. So I got the idea one day when I was cleaning up my garage. I mean, I'm looking at all this stuff and there's, there's no way I could do it with just one of them. And that's when I came up with the idea for the duplicator. To use the duplicator, you first gotta point it at your subject. And you gotta make sure you have space on the left and the right sides of the screen. And then you're ready to go. Using quantum energy, it copies the subject's body signature and then transports said energy directly next to you. But after that, you're ready to use your duplicate. I've always had a tough time doing house chores, you know, like scrubbing the dishes and cleaning my toothbrushes, but with my duplicate, you know, it's great. The duplicator can be found in most major electronics stores. But remember, with the duplicator, you can make the impossible possible. We at the Cox Short Film Showcase are glad you're back. I've been informed that it looks crazy when I stand here talking to myself. But since you're here, why don't we check out this mini documentary about the advent of the Carolina beach music. He was among a talented group of artists who hailed from Norfolk, Virginia that forever changed the game for blues, soul, and funk. Eventually, he branched out to create his own sound known as Carolina Beach Music. He was none other than the legendary General Norman Johnson. Johnson was born on May 23, 1941 in Norfolk, Virginia, spending most of his formative years in the Huntersville section of the city. In his youth, he quickly showed a talent for singing and performing by starting in his church choir at just the tender age of six. I was singing my father's group. And I sung with them uh, from Norfolk to New York City from the age of, at the age of six. And uh, they used to go from church to church, right? And uh, they would take out the, the uh, silver offering, that's what they call it. A basket mm -hmm. for, for the boy wonder, a basket for the group. And the boy wonder always got four times more than the group did. So when I got to be 12 years old, they had a meeting and they said, they used to call me Shorty. He said, Shorty, you know when Jesus became 12 years old, he was considered a man. And I said, yes, sir. He said, well, it, you considered a man now, Shorty. So your, your, your money's going to have to come into the till with everybody else. And I quit. <laughs> <laughs> In his late teens, Johnson became a part of a group known as the Humdingers and signed his first recording contract with Atlantic Records. In 1961, under the new management of Minute Records, the group changed its name to The Showman and began recording several tracks. I had a, a, a song called It Will Stand that was number one, like I said before, in Detroit for like five or six weeks. And they wanted, even when they were in Motown, they wanted to use my voice. When they left Motown, they called me. Little did I know that they were still in a fight with Motown and could not do any recording, <laughs> right? I'm sitting up in Detroit with nothing to do but learn, right? And Lamont Dozier would always say, just keep your ears open because I ain't teaching you nothing, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So for a year, a year or so, I did nothing but learn. 
the art of writing a song. Uh, what a lot of people don't know, because I'm not really a horn blower, but after that, when they finally were able to do business, um, I think I had like six or seven million selling songs that I had written, that I wrote. In 1969, Johnson moved his family up to Detroit, Michigan, where he eventually signed with Invictus Records. Once the soul singer's career as a solo artist reached a stalemate, he recruited the help of three other singers, Harrison Kennedy, Eddie Custis, and Danny Woods, to form the now famous group, Chairman of the Board. Holland Dozier and Holland are putting, putting together a group. So I went over to uh, the house. Lamont. Lamont, Lamont, Lamont Dozier. And uh, we introduced ourselves, and he sat down to the piano. And he started playing and started singing. And I stood there in amazement. <laughs> I say, now I heard this guy before, mm -hmm. but I had no idea that it was who it was. He was playing and singing, and I and it come to me like a flash. I said, now if I team up with him, mm -hmm. we would have a powerful things mm -hmm. because he had a very unique sound and a very and, 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 and it was, I could feel the flow, the talent. I say, I think I'm gonna go for this. And that's how I met him. His distinct sound and stage presence made them pioneers in the Carolina beach music scene and brought the group success in the early 70s. Beach music originally is rhythm and blues music. It's been adopted by this area. You gotta understand that uh, in the earlier days, to like when Caucasian people liked rhythm and blues music, it couldn't be known. Uh, now, how they got the name beach music is they could take that, they, could, they had a place that they could go where anything went. They go down to Myrtle Beach, and those people who liked that rhythm and blues music, they could play it on the jukeboxes, dance to it or whatever. And that's how, in the name, that's that's how I got the name, beach music. Sing, sing, you can make. Oh, sing that song. His legend can be spotted in several different aspects of music. He wrote one of Clarence Carter's most famous hits, Patches, Frida Payne's Bring the Boys Home, and he has provided several samples in popular music, including Mary Mary, Common, and Kanye West. His relevance to the music industry is so pertinent that in fact the Virginia General Assembly designated June 9th as General Norman Johnson Day. Sadly, Johnson passed away on October 13, 2010, after what was suspected as complications from lung cancer. His legacy will always be remembered. His sound will always be emulated. He is the one and only General Norman Johnson. As usual, Stephen Gale, oh, he nailed it. That scene with Johnson playing the piano, so touching, with his voice just barely there. However, it did leave me with a question for you. 
You know that scene with the reporter on the phone with Johnson's son? Obviously a wonderful interview to have, but if you knew that the only way you could use that interview is by having it on the phone, do you use it for this? Do you not use it for this? What would you have done? Let us know. That's all the time we have for tonight. We'll be rocking the dock again next week with an entire episode devoted to documentaries. Until then, I'm Will Rodriguez for the Cox Short Film Showcase. Thank you.